The Hill has an article about the strategy that the corporate Democrats are continuing to use against Trump. And um, I got to be honest with you, man, it's past the point of me just being angry and annoyed by it. I'm now actually scared by it. So you'll see what I mean here. It says, Democrats step up calls that Russian hack was an act of war. Quote, Democratic lawmakers are publicly calling out Russia for engaging in war by meddling in the U.S. presidential election. Let's pause. That framing is so misleading because they're calling it, the thing that they're calling an act of war. It war fucking war is Russia allegedly allegedly. I stress that because that's just the facts of what it, what we know right now. It's not proven allegedly giving the DNC email leaks to WikiLeaks, and then WikiLeaks releasing it. Now remember, what did we learn in those leaks? We learned a lot of things that we should have fucking known. We learned, for example, um, that Debbie Wasserman Schultz was pressuring the media to give better coverage about uh, Hillary Clinton and herself. She said, hey, how about I talk to your boss? She was talking to the people on Morning Joe. How about I talk to your boss? Because I don't like the way that you're covering us. We learned that uh, they tried to atheist shame um, Bernie Sanders in the Midwest as part of a strategy because Hillary was polling poorly in the Midwest. So they said, I don't know. These people are really religious. How about we just atheist shame Bernie Sanders and raise questions about his faith? Um, we learned that they celebrated closed primaries. I mean, think about that, man. They celebrated closed primaries. So they were happy that fewer people, when fewer people voted, because they knew, hey, that means that Hillary's more likely to win. When you allow in independence, when you allow in more millennials, when you have more people in an open process, in a democratic process, well, then she's more likely to, to lose. So the list goes on and on. I mean, later on, Donna Brazil uh, leaking the questions to Hillary Clinton before the debates. I mean, what a gigantic fucking scandal that is. So we learned that they tried to hide the debates. They, they biased the process, tipped the scales against Bernie Sanders from the very beginning. So the establishment had their anointed one, Hillary Clinton. And this is what we learned in those email leaks. Now, we should know that. The American people, we're talking about what's supposed to be a democracy. What's supposed to be a free and open process. But no, we have rigging and tipping the scales and fuckery going on behind the scenes. And Russia allegedly are the ones that get that information uh, to WikiLeaks, and WikiLeaks releases it, and now everybody goes, Oh, Russia, this is an act of war by Russia. That's unbelievable. So you want to fight a war over uh, allegedly an act that made the, the system and the process more open and more transparent and more what it's supposed to be like in a democratic system. And by the way, I keep saying allegedly because it is allegedly. You talk to WikiLeaks and they say, they swear up and down. We did not get these leaks from Russia. Now our intelligence agencies say, yeah, yeah, you did. But I don't fucking trust our intelligence agencies at all. I trust WikiLeaks way more. Why? Because WikiLeaks has been proven to be right about everything else they fucking talk about. You know, um, the intelligence agencies, on the other hand, they're... What are they, what's the CIA most recently in the fucking news for? Oh, I don't know, engaging in, in systemic torture? And obviously, back in the day, they would overthrow foreign governments and put in, uh, corporate fascist puppets to, to do the bidding of our multinational corporations? So, I don't trust our, they, again, they were just recently in the news because we got it from WikiLeaks that they're, now it's not just the NSA that can spy on everything you do, it's the CIA too, and they're spying through smart TVs. So, no, I don't fucking trust the intelligence. Why would I trust the intelligence agencies? And WikiLeaks, again, what did we learn from them? Well, we learned uh, the Chelsea Manning leaks that um, you had the U.S. military droning civilians, doing a double tap on them, so killing the civilians, circling around, hitting the first responders, who were just the people trying to... the the you know ambulance trying to help them out, and then they're laughing about it and joking about it and stuff. So we learned about war crimes we committed. So WikiLeaks has gained my trust. They're super nonpartisan. They were trying to get their hands on Trump's tax returns right now to release them. 
So you can't say, oh, they're only they're so biased in favor of, uh, you know, Republicans. Well, under under uh, Bush, they went after Bush. So they're against they're for transparency in government. It's not a partisan thing on their behalf. So just they've established a the trust. They swear up and down it's not from Russia. It, Democrats, partisan Democrats, establishment Democrats say, no, that is the case. The intelligence agencies say, no, that is the case. But now we're talking about war over that. War over, you know, leaks that we should have seen either way. We, we need to know how the sausage is made in a democracy. It's a fucking democracy. We're supposed to have free flow of information. So, and for everybody who says, well, that's not fair because what about the Republicans? I'm, allow me to say on the record right now, I'm in favor of getting RNC emails too. It's not like all of a sudden if you release the RNC emails, I'm going to be like, oh, what about their privacy? No, it's different. It's like saying, it's like when the president fucking does these wantonly illegal things. Do they get to say, I have privacy rights? No, we're your fucking boss, bitch. We put you in there. So if you're in the government, transparency is the is the way it's supposed to go it's not you're not a private citizen the dnc and the rnc these are giant arms representatives of the two political parties that run the fucking country they need transparency they don't get the they don't get the same fourth amendment rights because it's an organization and it is a political and public organization they don't get the same kind of rights as you know a a, a grandma in wyoming so understand that's my that's the way I measure it. If you're in government, transparency. I need full transparency. Now, I get it. The DNC and the RNC are technically private organizations. But the way they act, what they functionally what they are, is not really private. Because, again, they're representatives of the two major political parties in the U.S., which are public, which are uh, very important and have a lot of power. So if you leak stuff on them, that's totally fair game to me. It's not the same as leaking you know, information on a private citizen who might be a celebrity or something, for example. So yes, le leak the RNC stuff, leak the DNC stuff. But now all of a sudden people flip-flop for partisan reasons on leaks, and it drives me fucking crazy. Okay, so they're saying, there's act of war. Oh boy. Let's continue. They say the Democrats have been particularly bullish in the wake of FBI Director James Comey's disclosure that the Bureau uh, is investigating whether there was coordination between President Trump's associates and Russia in the influence campaign, which involved leaking hacked personal emails, they say, from Democratic operatives to damage candidate Hillary Clinton. All right, pause again. Damage her, these are facts. So they frame it like, oh, unbelievable, they're damaging her. As if it's like all made up. No, they are damaging her by giving information and data and quotes. I mean, guys, this is an old Republican trick. The old Republican trick is you quote what they say to them, and then they go, oh, I can't believe you're smearing me and doing a personal attack. No, bitch, you said it. I'm just quoting back what you fucking said. Same thing here with the DNC emails. She says all these things. By the way, we learned she said, we want totally open trade borders. That's what we want. The TPP is the gold standard. She had said that publicly, but we learned in the internal emails we want Open borders. Now, people on the right misinterpreted that as open borders like like people, open borders. No, no, no. She, in context, she was 100% talking about trade, uh, open trade borders. So no tariffs, no protectionism at all. Just let the corporations run wild and outsource all the fucking jobs and pad the bottom line and pay for slave labor in Bangladesh and elsewhere. That's what it really was. And that's worse. So... In other words, you quote her, what she says, what she believes, what they're doing behind the scenes, and then they go, Whoa! I can't believe you quoted me! This makes me look really bad. Yeah, no shit! Because you fucking said it, and you're wrong to say it! So again, this is the old Republican trick. Focus on the fact that there were leaks as opposed to what is in the leaks. That's so fucking gross, man. It's so gross. And you know damn well that if the shoe was on the other foot, and the scenario was flipped, then they, the parties would flip. In fact, Trump already did that. With leaks coming out of Trump's administration, all of a sudden now, he's the most anti-leak person in the world. He's like, these are criminal leaks. Criminal leaks. And the Republicans go as far as to say the journalist should be, you know, uh, brought up on trial, brought up on charges. What? So in other words, leaks when they affect Trump, oh my God, this is illegal. Leaks when they affect Hillary, oh, that's great. And, uh, 
totally what should happen in a, in a free and open democracy where we have information. So, no, you have to be consistent. I'm in favor of the leaks from the Trump administration. I'm in favor of the leaks on Hillary. Because, again, these are people in positions of power and the government should be transparent. Now, I'm not talking... There's obviously things where you draw the line, like, don't fucking leak the nuclear launch codes. Duh. You know, don't uh, leak uh, information about where our troops are on the battlefield right now in the midst of a fight or something. Duh. Got it. But outside of that, if we're learning shit that we should know anyway, I mean, the old trick that the government has been using for decades now is anything that's slightly embarrassing to us, the people in power, we'll, we're just going to say it's classified, top secret, you can't look at it, you can't fucking talk about it. So it's no longer, hey, we're classifying this because it should be and because it's a legitimate state secret. It's classifying it because, man, this is embarrassing if it, if it gets out. That's not grounds to fucking classify it. But here we go again, man. Unbelievable. The, the damage is Hillary Clinton. Because she fucking said things that should damage her and we should know about it more. The warfare accusations fit into a larger narrative pushed by Democrats that casts President Trump as weak on Russia and plays up the damage done by Moscow through the electoral interference. The rhetoric also puts Republicans, who often characterize themselves as more hawkish on Russia and defense, in a bind as they try to defend the new administration's strategy on Russia. Representative Bonnie Watson Coleman, a Democrat from New Jersey, most recently accused Russia of engaging in warfare. Quote, I think this attack that we've experienced is a form of war, a form of war on our fundamental democratic principles, Coleman said during a hearing this week at the House Homeland Security Committee. Two other Democrats made similar charges at the House Intelligence Committee hearing where Comey testified, quote, I actually think that their engagement was an act of war, an act of hybrid warfare. And I think that's why the American people should be concerned about it, said Representative Jackie Spe Spire, Speyer, however you pronounce that, Democrat of California. Quote, this past election, our country was attacked. They were attacked by Russia, said Representative Eric Swalwell, Democrat of California. I see this as an opportunity for everyone on this committee, Republicans and Democrats, to not look in the rearview window, but to look forward and do everything we can to make sure that our country never again allows a foreign adversary to attack us. Senator Ben Cardin, Democrat of Maryland, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee ranking member, has similarly described the election meddling as an attack and likened it to the United States, and I quote, political Pearl Harbor. So remember at the beginning of this, I said, look, it's at the point now where this is, like, scary. Like, I'm scared by the, the route the Democrats are taking. This is why. Because let me ask you a question. What's the response supposed to be when we are attacked? When there is an act of war committed against us? when it's a political Pearl Harbor committed against us. What is the response that everybody across the board agrees to when that really happens, when we are really attacked, when it really is a Pearl Harbor event, when it really is an act of war, a declaration of war against the United States of America? What's the logical response? We fight back. We go to war. We actually break out the guns, get the military ready, do an invasion, get hawkish, intervene. And look, I'm speaking as a committed non-interventionist, as everybody knows. I'm against wars of aggression. I'm against offensive wars 100%. But if it were true that there was an act of war committed against us and we were attacked first and there was a political Pearl Harbor against us, well, then it's just a matter of self-defense. Get the military ready! Get the military fight! Go, 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 go! So, the way they're framing it, the logical response is war. Let's go to war with Russia. This is why the hysteria and the new McCarthyism that the establishment corporate Democrats are doing is incredibly dangerous. Because they're escalating to World War III. Now, understand something, guys. Let me be crystal clear. If you want to talk about financial corruption between the Trump administration and Russia, well, not only am I with you, I will lead the charge in talking about that. So if President Trump rolls back the Crimea sanctions, that's a story. That's a story. If 
if President Trump and his now Secretary of State, the former CEO of ExxonMobil, Rex Tillerson, if they revive the Russia oil deal that they had with ExxonMobil, a multi-billion dollar deal, well, then you have a real conversation about financial corruption, that they probably worked behind the scenes and said, look, we don't really give a fuck that you jacked Crimea. The reality is we care more about money. We care more about our own personal well-being and financial gain. Um, and we've made some deals uh, behind the scenes. So guess what? We're going to resurrect this uh, multi-billion dollar oil deal, which, by the way, says, again, sends the message. We're not only, only are we going to be neutral on the Crimea situation, we're going to incentivize you to maybe do it again in Estonia or elsewhere. Because then you have a real story. You have a real story of some sort of corrupt deal behind the scenes that involved money and... And, it, you know, you have the president making policy not based on what's best for the country, but the president making policy based on financial reasons. So if you want to go after the, the Russia angle over that, I'm with you, I'll lead the fucking charge. But they don't do that. The Democrats are now explicitly taking a hawkish line, and they're now saying President Trump is Vladimir Putin's puppet. He's a weak bitch, and Putin controls him, and now the only way that Trump can prove these establishment Democrats wrong is what? To go to war. To escalate in a military sense. And if you think I'm kidding, we covered the story a while ago, you go back and watch it. Rachel Maddow going after Trump on Russia, and she clearly argued, hey, if, if President Trump decides to take the NATO troops that are on Russia's border, by the way, an insane provocation. Imagine Russia put troops on Mexico's border. We would all be, oh my God, we're going to war. But we put NATO troops on Russia's border. <laughs> what? We didn't do anything wrong. Rachel Maddow argued, if Trump removes those, those troops from NATO's border, well, then it, it you know, Putin has uh, dirt on him. And maybe the PP tape is real. Remember that? The unproven, unverified, oh, there's a the Russian government as a tape of hookers peeing on Donald Trump or peeing on his bed while he watches it. I don't fucking know. But that but Rachel Maddow argued if Trump de-escalates from the brink of war with Russia and removes the NATO troops from the border, well, then he's Putin's bitch. So now there is no if, ends, or buts about it. The Democrats are flat-out hawks on Russia. The establishment Democrats have become neocons on Russia. This is why I get so angry about the Russia hysteria. This is why Jordan Chariton and Jimmy Dore and Michael Tracy get so angry about the Russia hysteria because it has real-world consequences. And again, you don't find it interesting that why the Democrats only focusing on the place where allegedly they were involved in getting the DNC leaks, again, which are factual and things they really said, uh, you know, why are they only focusing on the people who leaked that to WikiLeaks and then WikiLeaks ran with it? The answer is obvious. Yes, it has to do with the fact that they feel like if they could have kept all their lies and their corruption and their cheating under wraps, then they could have won. So it does have something to do with that. It absolutely does. And furthermore, if you really were concerned about the financial corruption angle and you weren't now all of a sudden hawkish on Russia, you wouldn't just talk about the Russia financial connection angle. Guys, Donald Trump has business in over a dozen other countries. We covered him the other day. I gave you the exact list of the countries he's in. He's in South Korea. He's in Mexico. He's in Turkey. Um, and he's in China. And what he does is he has, you know, furniture made in these places, ties and clothing made in these places, and he outsources his own jobs as he says, no, no, I'm against outsourcing and I'm going to protect American jobs. And you, there's even been, like, for example, Taiwan. Remember the phone call between Taiwan and Trump that was a big story because the Taiwanese president called Trump and said, hey, I want to congratulate you on winning. And that was this huge story. Well, that actually should have been a story, not because of the phone call. Who cares about that angle? I know China was mad or whatever, but the reason they did it is interesting because allegedly somebody from Trump's business contacted them weeks before Trump won the election and said, how about we do a hotel in Taiwan? So in other words, again, putting personal business above the, the policy that's correct for the country and sparking an international incident based on 
you wanted to make more money and build another hotel. See, that's the real angle of corruption with the Trump administration. He's already vo violated the emoluments clause of the Constitution because he is doing personal business dealings all over the place. He's doing it with foreign governments, like I just said, over a dozen of them he has personal business in. Uh, furthermore, he registered eight new businesses in Saudi Arabia during the campaign. So think about that. He registers eight new businesses in a fucking terror state that beheads people in the public square for sorcery and witchcraft and apostasy. They say all atheists are terrorists. They cover women up from head to toe. They say you can't drive, you need guardians, you don't have the same rights. So we have an, a, a country with the same ideology as ISIS. They're ISIS that made it. He registered eight new businesses in a terror state. Nobody fucking talks about that. They don't think that's a scandal. That's a real scandal. And there's a personal financial corruption angle where he's putting his own money, his own personal interest above the policy that's right for the United States and the world. There's your story, but no, all you want to do is scream about Russia, and you want to ignore all the other countries where he has personal financial ties and there's corruption going on, because again, it's not really, they're not really concerned, the establishment Democrats aren't really concerned about the corruption, they're corrupt too, they want a fucking Hillary Clinton to win, they're really mad about that, that's what it boils down to, they're really mad about oh, Russia maybe was involved in getting the, the DNC leaks, which were real, to WikiLeaks and then WikiLeaks ran them. So, and now they're willing to literally do, escalate to war over that. And again, it's not me saying it, they keep saying it. I read you the fucking quotes. It's an act of war, act of war, act of war, act of war, act of war. Stop saying that, because then the logical response is we gotta go to fucking war over emails that we should have seen anyway. So, this is, this has gone way too far. The hysteria may have even eclipsed McCarthyism. The new McCarthyism may have even eclipsed old school McCarthyism. And it's all the establishment Democrats screaming, Russia, 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 Russia. No, no, no. If you want to talk about the financial corruption, agreed. But every time you make one of these arguments where you are hawkish on Russia like all of these guys are now, like Rachel Maddow says, now Rachel Maddow, the duh position for her is just keep the troops on the Russian border. Well, then you're abandoning liberal va values, you're abandoning progressive values, and you're going to lose upcoming elections. Because now you're not talking about single-payer health care, you're not talking about uh, raising the minimum wage, you're not talking about free college, you're not talking about ending the wars. Your main argument against them is, oh my God, he's uh, Vladimir Putin's puppet, and now we got to be hawkish on Russia. And think about it, they made, the Democrats make two claims at the same time that are contradictory. The first one is, Trump is an unhinged, thin-skinned, narcissist buffoon who's trigger-happy and look out because he's crazy. They say that while at the same time saying, oh my god, here he's Vladimir Putin's puppet, when is he going to prove us wrong about that? Uh, and, you know, he's really got to be tougher on Russia. So you want the person who is a thin-skinned, narcissist buffoon who's trigger-happy and crazy to now escalate and be tougher on Vladimir Putin. That makes no sense. You pick one or the other. <laughs> Either you say, yeah, go to war and be hawkish and be tougher on Vladimir Putin. Prove you're not his bitch. Either you say that or you say, whoa, 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 he's a thin-skinned narcissist buffoon and you want to make sure you stay as far away from any kind of conflict when it's that guy. Because there's no telling what a guy like that'll do. So this is why, you know, it drives me crazy, man, because if you keep screaming over and over and you've been all along, Trump is weak, Trump is weak, Trump is weak, Trump is Vladimir Putin's bitch, he's Vladimir Putin's bitch. How long until that thin-skinned narcissist decide to, decides to prove you wrong? And how long until, that's what I'm afraid of. The real Russia scandal is not just the financial corruption, which is real. The real Russia scandal is the Democrats now being more hawkish on Russia and prodding Trump so much that it might end up blowing up into a, a very, very serious international crisis. The real Russia scandal is the opposite of what all the establishment Democrats think it is. They think it's, he's his bitch. He's Putin's bitch. No, the real scandal is going to be when he decides to prove that he's not his bitch. And then we're all up Shit's Creek without a paddle. 
So maybe pipe down with the insane, deranged rhetoric about WAR! ACT OF WAR! ACT OF WAR! ACT OF WAR! Because this is getting very, very destabilizing and is putting us in a very, very terrible situation.